Welcome to Shankar IAS Academy's Editorial Analysis 12th October 2024. Before getting to the article, let's see the important announcement of Shankar IAS Academy. Pre-storming UPSC Prelims Test Series 2025 Batch 2 starts on 19th October 2024. Without any delay, let's see the today's article. Three editorial topics are taken from the Hindu and Indian Express. The first topic is Respect the Mandate, which is about Jammu and Kashmir's election. This article is taken from Hindu newspaper. Second article is about a noble lesson, which is about noble praises. This article is taken from Indian Express. Third article is average growth of livestock and fisheries. This article is taken from Indian Express. This article is about Nobel Peace Prize 2024 for the nuclear disarmament. In the light of this question, let's discuss the, this article in means point of view. In the light of Nobel Peace Prize of 2024 for the nuclear disarmament, explain various ethical, security, humanitarian issue in forefront and highlight India's stand in the arena of peace and disarmament. Let's get into the article. In this article, we are going to see the Nobel Peace Prize 2024, which was given to Kidan Q, an organization dedicated to preserving the testimonies of survivors of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombing and advocating for global nuclear disarmament. And also, the article suggests that while remembering the story of survivors is important, it may not be enough to prevent future atrocities. The ongoing violence around the world and the continuous existence of nuclear weapons shows the challenges of translating memory into effective action as it could never be forgot. With this information, let's see about the global disarmament and international efforts. Non-proliferation treaty, NPT and the comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty attempting to curb the spread of nuclear weapons. In this, Indian foreign policy maintain a policy of nuclear deterrence with its no first use doctrine, which advocate for a nuclear weapons free world. The challenges faced here is achieving global disarmament without compromising national security. Let's move on to the nuclear doctrine of India, which defines nuclear weapon use in peace and war. It established deterrence and guides response in conflict. When we go back to history, it begins in late 1940 under Homi J. Bawa. After that, Nehru's early advocacy for nuclear disarmament. After that, China's nuclear test in 1964 plays major power tried to impose the nuclear non-proliferation treaty to impose the nuclear non-proliferation treaty on non-nuclear states. Nuclear non-proliferation treaty. It was signed in 1968. It requires state to abandon nuclear weapons in exchange for peaceful nuclear technology. India viewing the treaty as discriminatory refused to sign. After its 1974 nuclear test, India emphasized peaceful nuclear use, but in 1998 conducted test increased regional tension between Pakistan and India. India's nuclear doctrine adopted in 2003, which established no first use policy, which committed to using nuclear weapons only in relation to a nuclear attack. In contrast, Pakistan frequently threatens nuclear use. That creates the regional challenges. With this, let's see the advantages of NFU. It limits the complexity and cost of nuclear arsenal. It reduces accidental or easy usage of nuclear weapons. Further, it strengthens India's case for NSG and UNSC membership. That is, Nuclear Suppliers Group and United Nations Security Council membership limits military operation especially against Pakistan and China. Let's see the arguments against no first use. Arguments against no first use are rejected by many nuclear states as only declared by others. It may be the disadvantage to India against adversary with low nuclear thresholds. It limits India's military options against provocations. With this, let's move to the implication of abandoning no first use. It damages the India's image as a responsible nuclear power. After that, it could trigger nuclear arms, race and escalate tension among other countries. First use policy requires significant investment in MRV surveillance intelligence. Further, first use 
policy requires significant investment in weapon system surveillance and in intelligence india currently lacks ad advanced technology like multiple reentry vehicle which is necessary for targeting enemy nuclear assets let's see the nuclear security and doctrine of deterrence india's nuclear doctrine based on the deterrence theory is designed to protect the country from nuclear aggression a global push towards nuclear disarmament challenges india to reassess its policies in line with its border security objectives after that india is ready ready to face the nuclear disaster preparedness the legacy of hiroshima and hiroshima and nagasaki speaks to the disaster effects india's nuclear energy ambitions with multiple operation nuclear power plants make it imperative to incorporate lessons from both nuclear war and warfare and accidents into its disaster management strategy the national disaster management authority should focus on nuclear emergency protocols training infrastructure to minimize damage in case of nuclear event now let's see the ethical angle of nuclear warfare the nobel peace prize to nihon kidankyo raises fundamental ethical questions regarding the use of weapons of mass destruction in a world where nuclear weapons are still seen as instruments of deterrence there is a growing need there is a growing need to re-examine the moral implications of possessing and potentially using such weapons. Ethics in warfare, particularly in the context of humanitarian, particularly in the context of humanitarian law, which emphasized all cannot be fair in love and war. With this, let's move on to the challenges of global disarmament. The challenges for India and the world ties in balancing disarmament with maintaining security in an increasingly polarized world. As na nations like North Korea continue to expand their nuclear capabilities, global disarmament appears difficult. For India, which faces security threats from both Pakistan and China, nuclear disarmament is unlikely in the short term. But India can continue advocating for non-proliferation while maintaining its deterrence strategy. Let's see the strengthening international norms to curb the disarmament. Reviving multilateral disarmament forums, strengthen international agreements against proliferation, advocate for nuclear weapon-free zone in South Asia. With this, move on to disaster preparedness and response. India should continue to strengthen its disaster man management protocols, especially with regard to nuclear risk. Enhancing public awareness and build resilient infrastructure and co coordinating with international agencies will be key steps to, to be a disaster prepared nation. After that, ensuring safeguards for nuclear plants and upgrading emergency response systems are crucial, particularly given India's reliance on nuclear energy. Let's try to write the main answer towards this question. Next topic of discussion is livestock and fisheries average growth. In the light of this main question, let's discuss this topic. Discuss the role of livestock in socio-economic development and what are the challenges faced by this sector due to accelerate climate change. The article highlights India's agriculture growth averaging 3.7% from 2014 to 2024 with much of the recent buoyancy driven by the livestock and fisheries subsectors which registered significant year-on-year -year growth of 5.8% and 9.1% respectively between 2014 to 2023. Horticulture say strong gains while field crops lagged. Role of livestock and fisheries in social and economic development. Livestock and fisheries play a pivotal role in the socio-economic progress of many countries, especially in rural and agricultural economies like India. Income and livelihood generation. Livestock and fisheries are crucial for rural livelihood, particularly for small and marginal farmers. They provide a steady and often more reliable income than traditional crop farming, which is highly dependent on weather condition, food security and nutrition. Livestock products such as milk, egg, meat and fish are rich in protein, vitamin and minerals is essentially for addressing mal malnutrition and improving overall public health. After that, fisheries particularly in coastal area are the vital source of affordable and high quality protein for local communities. 
which ensures better nutritional standards and contributing to food security of coastal area. In the angle of women empowerment, it this sector offer numerous opportunities for women's participation and entrepreneurship. Many women are involved in dairy farming, poultry rearing and artisanal fisheries helping them gain financial independence and show, social recognition. In the light of this, Prabhavana Multi-State Women's Cooperative Society empowers women and transgenders through self-employment in natural fiber production. With this side, sustainable practices and the environmental Im impact based on dairy and fishery sector. Sustainable aquaculture reduces overfishing, protects biodiversity. Mixed farming and rotational grazing enhance soil fertility, which promotes sustainability. Market integration and value addition. Value added products, cheese, butter, fish oil, helps rural economies engaged with national and international markets through their small scale industries. Challenges faced by livestock and fisheries sector. Despite the sig significant socio-economic contribution of the livestock and fisheries sector, both face numerous challenges that can hinder their growth and sustainability. They are this disease and animal health issue, climate change and environmental degradation, access to technology and infrastructure, access to credit and insurance, lack of skilled labor and training. Let's see in the in detail. This is an animal health issue. This is outbreak such as food and mouth diseases, avian influenza and swine fever can cause severe economic loss by reducing productivity, killing livestock and res restricting exports due to quarantine restrictions. In fisheries, aquaculture and marine fish fisheries face the threat of disease such as viral, bacterial and fungal infections, poor water quality and improper management in fish farms can exaggerate these issues. In the view of climate change and environmental degradation, livestock face extreme weather events such as heat wave, flood and droughts directly affects livestock production, feed availability, water resources and animal health. Rising temperature and change in rainfall pattern impact pasture quality and crop yield used as feed. In fisheries, climate change affects fish population through change in water temperature, ocean acidification and rising sea levels. Overfishing habitat degradation such as coral reef distraction and pollution also threaten fish stocks. Next, access to technology and infrastructure. In livestock, many small scale livestock farmers lack access to modern technologies such as artificial insemination, better breeding practices and veterinary care. Infrastructure ga gaps including insufficient cold storage facilities and milk collection centers hamper productivity and reduce product quality. In fisheries, inadequate access to cold chain infrastructure, processing units and modern fishing equipped limit uh, equipment Modern fishing equipment limits market access and led to post-harvest losses. Post-harvest losses. Access to credit and insurance. Small-scale livestock farmers face difficulties in accessing formal credit from banks due to lack of collateral or formal land titles. This limits their ability to inv invest in expanding production, adopting new technologies or improving animal health. Insurance products for livestock are often underdeveloped or too expensive for most smallholders. In fisheries, particularly in artisanal or small-scale fisheries, also face challenging in accessing affordable credit and insurance, leaving them vulnerable to, vulnerable to risk such as equipment damage, climate events or fluctuating fish population. Let's move on to lack of skilled labor and training. In livestock, many farmers lack the technical knowledge and skill needed to improve animal husbandry, breeding, feeding practices and veterinary care. Limited access to extension services and training programs compounds these challenges. Fishers often lack formal training in sustainable fishing practices, resource management and business development. This limits their capability to adopt more sustainable methods or improve their earnings. With this information, let's see the government initiati initiatives to support livestock and fisheries. 
National Livestock Mission launched in between 2014-15 for sustainable livestock development. It focuses on feed, fodder, disease control, livestock ins insurances. After the Rashtriya Gokul Mission, which focuses on indigenous cat cattle development improving milk productivity. Gokul Grams Artificial Insemination National Bovine Genomic Center National Bovine Genomic Center are, are the key aspects of this mission. Let's move on to the Dairy Development Schemes. National Program for Dairy Development 2014 Milk Production and Infrastructure in, It focuses on milk production and infrastructure improvement. Rastiya Pasudan Vikas Yojana 2014 It focuses on genetic improvement and veterinary services. Pradhan Mandri Matsya Sam Sampade Yojana, which is launched in 2020, enhances fish production, infrastructure, sustainable aquaculture. It aims to double fish production 22 MMT by 2024 to 2025. And also, it, it aims to create 5 million employment through this scheme. Pashu Sanjeevini Scheme. It is a part of Rashtriya Gokul Mission which focuses on improved livestock productivity via health cards and digitized records. Key aspect of this Pashu Sanjeevani scheme is ePashu Heart, web portal for breeding and livestock data. With this all, we can conclude that livestock and fisheries are vital for economic growth, food security and rural livelihood. They provide essential nutrition, support millions of jobs and contribute to agricultural sustainability. So, promoting this sector through innovation and sustainable practices is crucial for en enhancing productivity and improving the quality of life for communities worldwide. From this information, try to answer this mains practice question. In the conclusion, if you like this video, share to your friends and give your valuable comments. Never forget to subscribe this channel. Thank you for listening.